Welcome to Nina Williams in depth. I am your host, a friendly tree, and today I want to talk about Nina's move, Stingray. Before we do that, let's just make sure our settings are all correct and as we expect, as we don't want to get any inaccurate information, we don't want to think a move is better or worse than it actually is, and we do not want to be spreading misinformation either. So we want to make sure everything we allow, everything that we land is true and representative of the move and the situation we want. And I'm happy with that for now. So Stingray, move number 85 in the move list, the input is Ford 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 34. I should also mention this is the new move she was given at the beginning of Season 3. So it also got a change in Season 4 and I guess that happens quite a lot where a new move is introduced and it may not necessarily reflect the intended purpose of the move well enough or it may, it may be stronger or weaker than they expected and so they make some changes to try and try and make it clearer on how they want the move to be used in a match. I believe that's what they've done in this case although the changes they made aren't necessarily what everybody expected or what people wanted so <laughs> yeah anyway we'll, we'll have a look into the properties now so it's Ford 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 34 a reminder with a Ford 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 that's a while running so the whole move looks like this doing 33 damage knocking them away and yeah it's um, 20 frame startup on the first hit which because of the input of Ford 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 means you could technically get it at 22 frames but with a perfect input you'd generally be getting it at like 23 frames anyway because it'd be a Ford neutral Ford Ford or a Ford Ford neutral Ford um, and more often than not you'd be getting it slower than that so it's not really intended as a punish as a while running move although there were a few situations where it would work but as we go on it's no longer as applicable. The reason for that is because in Season 3 this was a natural combo that launched, now it's a natural combo that knocks down. I will quickly talk about the input a bit more. So as it's a Ford 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 input, it's quite difficult to do up close. So you'll find when you're doing it you'll, you'll try Ford 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 and you'll get something like that. So the trick I have, or the method that I use to do instant while runnings, is I imagine that the the dash is a stance, so forward forward in itself is a stance and then from there it's a forward plus three during the stance like that Oh, but I still dropped a lot see? <laughs> yeah <laughs> every second time nope, never mind yeah so it just takes a lot of practice to do and I mean you're gonna find yourself not really using this move at point blank range very often so it's not too applicable to this move that's just a reminder I'll also point out that prior to season 3 while running through or forward 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 3 was also an input for her leaping heel hold so this move used to have two inputs so it's, it's a welcome change because she didn't need two inputs for that move it's nice to give her another move there even if she does have a super bloated move list most characters do okay so the range I mean, because it's a well running move, it's got a godlike range. We knew that. There's no surprise there. The animation looks a bit funny to me, and the second hit looks kind of like Ice Pick, or the second hit a Reverse Ivory Cutter. So it kind of looks like a recycled animation. And that kick, I mean, I reckon they could have done a nicer looking kick there, but that, that's me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the range is pretty undeniably good and that's that's what you'd expect from a while running move now as of season 4 the first hit is minus 13 it was also minus 13 in season 3 but the second hit is also minus 13 now as a trade for it not launching anymore so previously it was minus 15 but a launcher which was higher risk but significantly higher reward so now it's like a moderate risk low reward scenario if you're using it as a natural combo or as just an approach tool or something like that. So I guess that goes into the other uses of it, but we'll go into that a bit more in a moment. Um, tracking. Tracking isn't great on it, so we'll demonstrate by knocking back and then doing it. So if you look here, stand up, I can step left quite easily. 
I step right, I'll block the second hit. I think I can walk it, can't I? Oh, sorry. Yeah. So you can you can walk both hits in either direction, in other words. To weaker, to sidestep left. But yeah, you can walk in both directions. So it's a very linear tool. So it doesn't really apply as an approach tool there. So the big I guess the big point of this move, and I'll go into this more in application though, but the main use it has is wall carry. So for example, if you use it after a juggle, well after a tailspin, it sends the opponent flying away. So in many situations it's her most accessible wall carry option to send them far away because it's two hits. And um, another season four thing they did to show that this is the intended use of it is they improved the recovery on hit. So now it's easier for you to dash up afterwards to get a wall hit. So it's high damage at the max scaling when you've got um, 30%. So when you've got a scale like that it does nine damage. Three and then six, which is the same as the while running one plus two, which does not give you wall carry, and in many situations is the highest damage without range. So, yeah, it's um, it's pretty much intended to do be used like that. Okay, so we've talked about the range, we've talked about the frame advantage. Oh, we haven't talked about the first hit. So the first hit is minus two, so it's not really great to be used as an approach tool in any way, and you're not really going to be using this on its own unless you're trying to use it for crushing but even then it doesn't have great low crush more low evasion, sorry yeah okay, so you will be using it for its low evasion yeah, there we go, that's what I was trying to demonstrate <laughs> and obviously you can get jabbed out there so, um yeah, it can, it can evade lows, but it's not amazing, like most of Nina's low evades. Not most, some of them. Um, but yeah, it's, you wouldn't really be using that first move on its own, unless you're doing it on a big read. Um, okay, we've done damage, we've done tracking, we've done frame advantage, we've talked about range as much as we can. I think those are all the properties we need to talk about. Oh, and we talked about wall carry. Alright, so let's go on to application. Application. So... We've kind of already covered this, I think. The properties of the move clearly outline how the move should be used now. Because it doesn't want it to be used as a high-risk approaching launcher. And as I said, it's gone from being a high-risk, high-reward sort of thing to a low, uh, sorry, a moderate-risk, low-reward kind of scenario. So it just it isn't worth trying to use it as an approach because... I mean, it's still kind of high risk. It's moderate risk if they block it, but as I've shown, they can step it either direction. It's kind of easy to see it coming. She doesn't have many good tools that track from instant while running, unless you're using instant while running 3 plus 4. Which, of course, they can duck still. So, if they see that coming, they can either try and step, or they can just block and still get a 13 frame punish, which is still pretty hefty from most characters. For example, Nina, you get 33 damage from that, but if you block it and you want to do a 12 frame or a 13 frame punish, you can get 32 damage. So it's pretty much balanced risk reward exactly in that scenario. But there are other characters who get more damage, get knocked down, get all these different scenarios. So it's just not not in your favour really. Or it's not not worthwhile enough to do in my opinion. So with that in mind with the fact that it's very linear, with the fact that it's unsafe and you can't confirm it or anything, I would use it as ball carry. Now, there's another catch here. So, one of the changes everybody expected, well, everybody, a lot of people expected, a lot of people wanted, was they wanted its range on the second hit increased. Because if you do too many hits in a combo, if you do uh, 10 hits prior to it, the second hit is incredibly hard to connect. And Julia, for example, her running while running 2-1 is not incredibly hard to connect. It's the same same thing, same application, but it works much more consistently, much more effectively. Um, so, for example, just a basic combo. Drop it, yep. Basic combo, guys. Basic combo.
you can see that that doesn't link. So a lot of the time what people do is they remove one hip. See, and that works. But if you want to do this extra hit, you get more wall, oh, you get more wall carry, you get more damage. It's really tight. I'm going to try a couple of times so you can all sit back in amazement and laugh at me failing. Not even close. Not even close. <laughs> oh, I thought I had it for a second. I was like, yes, finally! Nope, not even close. You can see, you can see how tough it is. You can see how bad my dash is. Oh, stick went funny. Come on guys, we've got to get it at least once. Get it once for the video. Be nice to me, video gods. No. Did the dash too early, that's what's happening when I'm getting that. No. I'm trying to do it too early, because you need to do it like instantly. That was close. I think I had the dash right, I just did it too early. As I did the input too early. That was probably a couple of frames off. Oh, I thought I had it. Okay, let's do an easy one. So we need... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I said ten hits before, didn't I? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nah, who cares? Um, anyway, you get the point that it's very difficult to use there. One last try. Nah. So, you don't. <laughs> very few people will. You can, you do it, it does work, it's just very tight. Um, and I'm not going to bother doing it anymore because there's no point. There are a few very niche scenarios you can use this move outside of a wall carry and bringing up our friend Zafina. But this is less relevant now. In fact, it's irrelevant now thanks to the changes in Season 4. But prior to Season 4, Zafina did that. It's an old awkward thing from Tag 2 that you do. Because of the pushback, you find that nothing would reach. So you'd have to figure out what to do. So now, you can do that. Which is great. But before... Oh! Before you drop it. Before you do that. And that would be the optimal thing into launch. So now now we just do dash guys a cannon. But I don't see Zafina's use that as much, to be honest. Not in... Um, not in Tekken 7. That was a tag launcher. So what they'd do is they'd do while standing 2 down, while standing 2 plus 5 down, and then um, they'd either tag and get a full combo, or they'd be made harder to punish. Uh, okay, wall, wall, wall. That looks nice. We'll go brimstone and fire because it's not all red. Okay, so let's say. Let us say we are going here. And we'll just do that same combo again. I know it's not optimal. And we'll drop it again and again. Oh my god. So if I did that, that would go to the wall. Oh my god. Sorry guys. So you can see that almost got them to the wall. So if I go here... I 
like that. So it's almost full wall carry on this stage. If you got the, the third hit, you probably would. I should point out that she does have another option for wall carry, so you can do more hits. Well, without it being as crazy execution, but it's still tough. Too tough for me. Too tough for me. Too tough for me on a Sunday morning. So you can see that's a tiny bit, a fraction bit more wall carry than omitting a while standing one and do while running 3-4. So it's up to you which one you want to do there. But um, the while running 3-4, omitting a while standing one is of course much easier. So it's probably the go-to option, I'd say it is. Now, if we do this combo and we get to the wall, and we drop it, we drop it, we drop it, This is giving me some butterfly practice. You can do whatever wall hit you want there. You're not going to be able to get up and do the sidestep ones in time. Um, so if I do like... Yeah, you can see there. There's no, no chance of me getting the sidestep ones there. Or if there is, it's very, very particular about its situation. So most of the time, you're going to do like a down forward 3-2. Or a 2. Oh, not a forward 2. Not a forward 2. Yeah, but you can see it's, it's quite spacing specific for that. So I, I generally do the down forward 3-2 options. Which is going to be the most, most consistent for you. You could also go for um, down 3-4-3, but I'd, I'd only really opt for that wall hit if I'm going for a floor break. But you can see, so the wall carry is good. It, do, it isn't going to give you optimal wall stuff, but it does give you consistent good wall stuff. So it's an, it's an easy wall carry option that can be used in many scenarios. And um, if we... Um, stand approach... If we do like the the old the old the new bread and butter that people have been doing, that's an easy 84 damage on a walled stage. Like very low execution demand to do it compared to her other stuff. So that's great. It's definitely opened the entry barrier for using Nina for a lot of people, which is good. Um, Applications. Okay, okay, there's more that we can use here. Um, it's less applicable now. But oh, if we did something like this, if you get the timing right, you can make it so that's guaranteed if they get up. Yeah. So that used to be a launch. And it's the same with that. So different knockdowns. You could get a guaranteed launch off it, but now now it's irrelevant because it doesn't launch. So old tech, not useful. Um, I think it's a stand up. I can't remember, guys. I don't use this one very often, but you can also use it at the wall for a cross up. Oh. Yeah, so you can do you can do some funny things with it at the wall. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I think this was the one I had most success with. Except it seems like I'm doing it too fast. If you do, maybe it's downward one. Yeah, you can catch them, and depending on how they get up, you can re splat them. Oops. Come on, tree. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. I think I've demonstrated that I don't know what I'm talking about here. Or I've demonstrated that it's not something that I would use too often. There we go. 
So it's got different application, but you can see now, oh, now that it doesn't launch them up, it's not as useful. Oh, come on. This is one of the situations we actually have to do the while running. Yeah. So you're not getting a huge reward off that stuff anymore. So you're better off doing the other Oki, doing other scary things. Um, but once again, variety is the spice of life, so it's good to mix things up, keep the opponent guessing, and the more options you have, the more the greater tools that you have to play with, as long as you're not stuck thinking of which one to use so much that you're using up too much of your mental stamina, then you're hopefully making them think about which one you'll use and make them use up their mental stamina. It's an interesting game, isn't it? Alright, that's everything I need to talk about with this move, I think, so on to the summary. Nina's Stingray, or while running 3-4, is the new move she was given in Season 3 that has had some changes in Season 4. It is a two-hit mid-mid kick string that sends the opponent flying away while it previously launched. Minus 13 on block for the first and second hit, minus 2 on, hit for the on the first hit, and knockdown on the second hit. It's very linear. It can be sidewalked in both directions, but it can be sidestep left for both hits or sidestep right for the first hit, sidewalk right for the second hit. Um, because of the speed, you're going to be getting it at about 23 frames if you do it fast. Its main use really is for wall carry, and it's a great option for wall carry, especially with some of her new bread and butters, which give her easy combos compared to what she had to use for wall carry before, for wall carry and damage before. So it's a great well, it's a great option to use for wall carry. As long as you're not doing the maximum hits, because when you've done the maximum hits, it becomes very hard to link. Like that. So it's good as long as you admit a hit because it becomes very challenging to do, connect if you do too many hits before the tailspin. So keep that in mind, but it does give easy follow-ups for good wall hits so it can allow for high damage. And it does the same damage as a wall running 1 plus 2 as a post tailspin ender, making it very practical to use a lot of the time, especially on a walled stage. It has some other niche uses, such as Oki or Certain Punishment, but with the change to it no longer being a launcher, even though it's now minus 13 instead of minus 15, it does mean that it's gone from moderate risk high reward to moderate risk, or yeah, still moderate risk in my opinion, because of how steepable it is, to low moderate reward. So I don't think it has as much application outside of wall carry now, but I don't think that's a problem. I think that's just they have they believe this move should be used as wall carry, that's its intended purpose. And so what they've done is they've changed things so that is clear to people. And it's great for that purpose. That's perfectly fine. What do you guys think of Stingray? Do you like the changes they made to it? Did you expect something different? I think a lot of people did. Um, I'm happy with how it is, to be honest. So I think it has a clear intended purpose now, and that's what we want. And I would much prefer other characters to get to lose their wall carry, opposed to Mina getting even better wall carry. Alternatively, I prefer the stages to be larger. But I don't think everyone should be able to wall to wall easily, and I think giving a character that could already wall to wall quite effectively better wall-to-wall -wall is not really a good solution, so I don't think they needed to improve the, this connecting with the number of hits, but um, I can understand why some people would, especially when you look at other characters in the cast that can wall-to-wall -wall more easily than Nina. Anyway, I hope you've liked this video, thank you for checking it out, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all next time. You win. What's done is done.